If you're marketing online, you should be using VBout. It's a platform to manage everything in one place. Email and nurture campaigns, visual automations, social media, landing pages, meeting scheduling, lead scoring, pipeline management, and campaign reporting. Make gorgeous emails from scratch or select from dozens of high converting templates. Score the best leads and add them to automations to drive more conversions. Schedule and post to all your favorite social platforms with the best creative from Canva and Pixabay. Engage your fans directly and measure content performance in real time. Easily create beautiful, responsive landing pages and forms to capture leads and register people for webinars on Zoom or GoToMeeting. VBout combines everything your marketing and sales team needs in one place. If you're an agency, manage client accounts with custom plans and full white label capability. Marketing online has never been easier. Go to VBout.com and try it free today. So let's talk about automation. Now the market is buzzing with this key term and you might hear this being referred to as uh, automation, workflow campaigns, drip campaigns, nurture campaigns, customer journey, that sort of stuff. In our case, an automation is a collection of workflows. And the workflow is a nurture process that takes your customers from the awareness stage to convert them into buyers. This is technically the ultimate uh, purpose of automation. Of course, there's other things like awareness, so you can educate them about what you do and so on. Uh, and some of the basic stuff we'll cover are what are triggers, actions, and filters? You'll probably hear this across uh, all different softwares that you might use. The configurations on VBout and how you can actually split your uh, workflows. Testing, best practices, and analytics. As an exercise, I recommend you identifying for your business five workflows that you feel uh, will replace the manual day-to-day -day things that you do, such as card abandonment emails, uh, product upsell, requesting reviews. Uh, so depending on the industry, you will probably find at least three to five different workflows that will be relevant to you. And we've assembled a whole lot of documents on e-commerce and others under our blog so you can um, go back to and just get inspired. I've also included here a few samples. For instance, as an exercise, you can uh, create or map out just uh, something similar to this where you say if somebody fills out a form on my site or download a PDF document, perhaps like a, a gated uh, ebook. Wait a minute, notify my team, my sales team, or my marketing. Send them an email, sync to a retargeting ad, and then three days later, start nurturing process for three days, six days, and so on. So this is really case by case basis. It takes a lot of testing, iteration, looking at the metrics. But I've included a few here, like a lead score based workflow, when somebody reaches a particular lead score. Browser push workflow, this is something uh, unique to VBOT as well, where if someone opts into your browser push, you can send them flow of uh, browser push notifications and uh, reactivation, or interest-based, etc. Now let's dive into the technology. On your VBOT account on the left, you navigate to the automation uh, feature. You'll see immediately your automations and your automated messages. The automated messages have all the messages that are ready to be used within the automation. You can create them uh, before you create your automation or you can start with your workflows first and then create these. So you have the flexibility to do either. Now on the screen, uh, you'll probably notice I have browser push, I have email, and because VBout supports email, browser push, and SMS uh, using Twilio, you can create these different assets here and, and integrate them into your workflows. And when you create an email, just like you did with the campaign, you can go back and get access to your templates, uh, repo of templates that you've created. Okay. Everything has its own settings and analytics. You can create, replicate, copy, um, and of course the labeling have to probably be something relevant. We usually use a combination of templates which are nicely designed or a naked template which I have mentioned uh, reference before. On the right you'll have also options to create a task around these um, and assign them to team members if you'd like. You can filter by type by SMS or email or browser push uh, and of course you can uh, create messages from scratch. Now under your automations, what you'll notice is two tabs. I actually have three. I have additional settings on my account, but uh, the automation templates, these are almost like email templates that are pre-made or SMS templates uh, designed, which are uh, just mapped out workflows for you. So for ex example, if you're using an education, if you want to use an educational journey to empower people, give them some, some rich uh, content that your team have produced, uh, you can uh, use this so you don't have to start from scratch. And of course, you can start from scratch by clicking that top right uh, option. 
but you can always start from a template. Now on the automation table, you'll see every single one that's uh, active. This is very important because at times people activate workflows and all of a sudden emails start go out or SMS messages. So you want to be sure this is active only if you want it. Completed uh, uh, steps and pending steps. So sometimes you might find things that are pending. For example, an email that's gonna go out in a couple days or something like that. Um, now on the right side, as everything else you've seen, you'll have the option to add tasks, create, copy, etc. So let, let's dive into it. So once you've created a new workflow, usually there's a title on the top. I highly recommend doing something relevant so you can reference back to it uh, and it will be meaningful. Uh, as you develop more and more workflows, this will probably be handy. Now uh, on the left panel, you have triggers and actions. Now triggers are the, is the thing that starts that journey. For instance, if somebody opts into an email, clicks on the link in an email, abandons a cart, completes an order. So it kind of reflects an action from the user side. And you also have some things that are not necessarily reflecting user action as a trigger, for instance, time-based uh, or updating an API. This is uh, probably more API-based. And what I mean by uh, a specific date, I can schedule something to repeat every day, checks against certain filters, which I'll cover, and then sends out an email or sends out an SMS. Okay. So um, again, triggers are the, are the start of these workflows. And the actions are the things that happen once this workflow has started. So to step back a little bit and explain what I mean by workflow. So a workflow is a sequence. So I can, this is one sequence starting out, but I can also have abandoned cart sequence. I can have somebody joining a, a list sequence. So technically each time I add a trigger, it's considered a new workflow. Okay. So this entire thing is an automation and inside of it, in this case, I have three different sequences or workflows. Now let's start building this out, uh, but before I do under the actions, I wanted to cover a sending email. If I'm all I need to do is drag it and drop it. Some people like to put it below, some people like to put it on the right, which is in our case. Um, I can also add a delay. This is very important. You want to delay actions so you don't have to, you don't send them all at the same time. I can keep on building this. So whatever I've mapped out on my PDF or on my uh, planning document, I can implement here. So you'll see as I click on each item, there's a black icon here. I hover over it and then I drag it to link it to the next action. If things are not linked, they will not be executed. So it's very important for you to click on it and link them together. Okay. Now, uh, one thing I want to emphasize is uh, the, the ability to double click on every single uh, object on the screen. So in this case, I clicked on a specific date I'm going to select my target list. You'll see this saying target lists, audiences, or push domains. So for, if you want to create a workflow on the browser push, I scroll to the bottom and I choose my domain that I've already set up. If I want to target a domain and a list, I can choose my target list that I'm going to send these emails to. Choose my trigger date, one time versus recurrent. So one time executes once, recurrent executes every day or on a specific day and time. Okay, So these are critical for you to understand the differences. One time executes once on that date, recurrent starts on that date and continue executing uh, every, every single day at uh, probably uh, 12 a.m. So don't make the mistake of setting out every day if you don't have some sort of filtering. And typically this is paired with something like a date. For instance, I want to send an email for someone whose sign up date um, or let's say last engagement or first engagement has been um, 90 days from today. Okay. So you can do something like this. Now, every day this executes, it goes through every single contact on your list. It checks the field, which is first engagement. If it's 90 days uh, ago from today, then it's gonna push them through this workflow. If they don't, they're probably gonna drop off. They, this won't execute for, these, uh, for this sequence or this contact. Now you can see if I made a mistake and link, the, uh, link things, I can delete them, or uh, I can double click on this arrow to add some filters. I can double click on the email to choose from my pre-existing automated messages. Again, I showed you this a second ago, where I can either create new ones from here. So if I create a new automation, it opens a new tab. So just be mindful of this because you have to toggle back to the tab. If you created a new one, you come back here, you click refresh, and the system will automatically populate it, so you can choose it directly. 
right? I can configure my delays. Now I can say, all right, two days later, on a specific time of the day, maybe 9 a.m., and send the follow-up email. Now, if you want to do something similar to, if someone did not open this email, resend it again, uh, that's possible. All I need to do is just add a filter, in this case, on the arrow. If I double-click on it, I can choose and or or condition, add new, and from the drop-down, I'll have the option to see email on open under the email engagement segment. Choose which email. You notice this draft sent, some of them are actually automated. And this allows me to filter this, uh, this out according to this type. So this is campaign A, B, these are automated the messages. So this references back to either your main uh, newsletter templates that you've sent out to see if someone opened them or didn't, or reference back to the automated messages to see if they opened them or not. You can do additional uh, settings, for instance, instance, you can pair it with also visiting a destination URL. Maybe a device operating system matches a specific uh, type, that sort of stuff. Now you can continue building these out as, as much as you want. And on the bottom, as you start, you know, kind of, uh, if these get bigger, you can use that bottom right grid to see what's going on uh, and navigate the view faster. There's a show stats option, which gives you a live overview of what's going on at each step. And you can also add notes under the triggers. There's an option all the way at the bottom, which I can drag on here and I can leave a note for my team explaining what this uh, trigger does. So uh, this is to follow up on um, activation. This way, if a team member logs in, they double click and they can read the notes. Now every single trigger have different actions. For instance, the abandon cart, if you've set up your e-commerce library with VBout, you'll have the flexibility to choose the domain you've set this up on, the launch date, um, and also have some additional things like if somebody, when they first add it to the cart, uh, or the last product added to the cart, VBout detects this, apply to historical data, so if we have original data on abandoned carts, and also filter by target segment. So typically what happens in this case, uh, VBout detects an abandoned cart, you should add a delay, filter, and I can double click here to say, um, or on the delay to give an hour. So in this example, what I'm doing is when somebody is detected as an abandoned cart, wait an hour and send them an email with the content of that abandoned cart. This is a simple example. If you want to do something like somebody joining a list uh, to opt in or fill out a form for downloadables, you can target them as well. Um, with a sequence of emails. So as you can see, every single one of these have its own configuration associated. Now one thing to note, sometimes people want to check on uh, opening or not opening an email. I highly recommend putting this after the delay. Because the sequence just go through every step one by one, once you pass the delay, giving them two days time to open that email, then you'll check the condition to take another action. Right? A lot of times they make the mistakes of putting the condition be before the delay. This doesn't give the, the contact enough time uh, to actually open that email. There is some shortcuts you can do like multi-selection and forking this and you can get really sophisticated with it uh, once you learn how to use it. It's very cool uh, to branch out to multiple multiple workflows. Now the actions here are sending an email, Twilio SMS, you'll have to have a Twilio uh, number, browser push, uh, you set up on VBout. You can also add people to a list, so you don't have to send them a message. You can send a, add them to an additional list, update their contact information, removing from a list, pushing them to a different journey. You can sync to your retargeting ad on Facebook. You can also notify your team members when someone reaches that stage. So you can see the power of this uh, and the, uh, the possibilities of you know getting people pushed through these sequences, nurturing them, and tracking every step of engagement along the way. Also, another cool thing on VBout is that you have the ability to personalize your SMS with someone's name. You can personalize the browser push with someone's name, giving you the flexibility to actually have a full-on one-to-one personalized experience. Now, there's a help section on the top right, uh, which you can leverage. History, so it auto-saves, so you can revert back to a previous version. And you also have the actions where you can publish, you can update, 
create new and switch automation. So just be mindful on when you create these, not to publish them immediately before you start testing things out. You might want to uh, perhaps just update the automation or uh, and continue or exit. So this makes it unpublished, uh, meaning it's not gonna execute. Uh, and uh, you can always come back, finish it, and continue working on it. From the analytics side, uh, let me just dive in into an example here. This gives you an overview of all the channels and performance across a specific date and time. How many sent, opened, and clicks. Breakdown step by step and every email. It tells you who are the recipients, who are pending, how many bounced, spam, top domains, that sort of stuff. So we really drill deep into each one. And in case you have someone pending, you can actually stop the sequence from happening for that particular contact. We show you who clicked on what. So this automation is pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Uh, you can track in depth what's going on and it allows you to unleash, unleash the marketer in you using marketing automation.